Greetings and welcome back to Doctor Who Revisited, the ongoing series where I go through every single Doctor Who episode and review them. And uh, this one, this is a very uh, nice, fun-sized uh, uh, two-parter, which, again, Doctor Who title names for episodes in season one, very, very iffy, so it's either Inside the Spaceship or Edge of Destruction. There's so many different names to this just one episode. As a matter of fact, this episode actually has more different names to it, different alternate titles to it, than it does episodes. It's only two uh, episodes written by David Whitaker, who obviously is the unsung hero of early Doctor Who. He was the story editor and script editor for uh, the first couple of seasons. And honestly, as a bottle episode, it really does work a lot. It, it mainly takes place in one setting, inside the TARDIS, and even in that very early, early, early stage of Doctor Who, we get to learn so much about the TARDIS in just, just those two parts, more so than we've learned in a lot of other episodes of, the sh of uh, uh, a lot of other seasons of the show, as a matter of fact. And more importantly than getting to know the TARDIS better, we're actually learning so much about these characters and the relationships between each other and how they respond to different uh, sort of situations. Essentially, this is like an early example of an escape room. When you really think about it, there's you're trapped in this one confined space and you have to find a way uh, of getting yourselves out of it by using all the clues given to you at any given moment. And we get to see how each and every one of those characters responds to certain clues differently. Obviously, there's some terror. I mean, this is one of those rare uh, Doctor Who episodes where there is no villain, per se. There is no main antagonist. It's really just the characters and how they respond and react to the situation at hand and how they try to take on one another. And honestly, as a character study, I think this episode really does work. It, it really just uh, it gives you a perfect sense of mystery and horror in such a confined space with very, very limited um, resources, in a way. And obviously, we get to see the Doctor uh, going on a much darker path than we've seen him in the previous two episodes. Not necessarily quite as dark as some of other Doctors have gone to, but this is one of the most scheming and uh, conniving first Doctor episodes that we've ever uh, gotten to see. And obviously, this is one of those episodes where the Doctor is just wrong. Straight up, flat out wrong. And he learns the hard way, uh, the error of his ways. And him and the rest of the companions become much stronger and better written characters as a result. And obviously, there's like major conflict between him and uh, Ian. There's even a, a, an attempt at strangling the Doctor by Ian at one point. His relationship with Barbara is really put to the test all throughout the episode, and I just love the reconciliation at the end where he apologizes to both Ian and Barbara, and he has that wonderful scene at the end with Barbara telling her how uh, valuable and how important she is to the team. And it really does, it, this episode, it really does exemplify uh, the best and worst of the first Doctor, in a nutshell, of how he, he can be really annoying and mistrusting and devious, and just not a very fun person to be around, a very grumpy and arrogant and uh, feeling of self-importance, but then he can just as easily turn around and become a forgiving, loving, lovable, happy grandfather type character that the first Doctor uh, was originally conceived as. And again, this is one of those episodes that really, uh, where the first Doctor, even though we get to see a much darker episode, uh, sorry, a much darker side to him, he really does get an opportunity to shine. And we see those four characters, the four major characters of this show, at that time at least, live their lives to the fullest and actually ful fulfill uh, the purposes that each one of those characters was were written for to the fullest. And... Again, like I said, as a bottle episode, it works. I loved all the hints. And it's really one of those uh, Doctor Who episodes that you really do get all the uh, everything you need out of the episode on several different rewatches because it's really just follow the clues 
And then eventually you'll get to the end of the mystery that you've, tried, you've been trying to solve the entire episode. It's really, in a way, it's sort of like an example of a Stephen Moffat episode, though not quite as well written as a Stephen Moffat episode. But it's really, like, like I said, it's follow the clues and you really get a better sense of knowing uh, everything that's going on upon a rewatch and a revisit and trying to figure out all the hidden clues. And uh, yeah, like I said, it, it hits on those mis mystery notes and on those terror notes and on those character points that uh, made the show what it is. And it's really just a great uh, palate cleanser, if you will, from the uh, this massive seven-part Dalek-themed uh, episode. And it's a great uh, sort of pit stop between this massive seven-part Dalek story and this other seven-part uh, historical story, which unfortunately uh, is a missing episode, but we're going to have to talk about that anyway. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it's a great pit stop, great palate cleanser, and uh, gets you... Uh, if you're watching this uh, in binge form, which is what I did just now, it really gets you bumped up and ready and excited to watch uh, the next episode, uh, which uh, we'll get to in a minute. But that is a story for another day. So, uh, again, really, really solid two-parter. And uh, I kind of wish Doctor Who would do more of these two-parters in the classic era of the show, even though I love the four-part and, hell, seven, eight, ten-part serials. I love them, but I kind of think these smaller stories are also just as important. And I wish we had more of these. I think it was like three or four. Uh, there's this one. There's the rescue, the Sontaran experiment, and Black Orchid. I think those were the only two-part episodes. Um, I, I might uh, get proven wrong as I go on with this uh, massive journey of re uh, rediscovery of Doctor Who. But uh, there's still so many episodes to watch and so many episodes to review that I can't really waste time on the, these types of semantics. So I'll see you next time. For the for serial number four, Marco Polo. Goodbye for now. Hi there! Thank you for watching the video. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends. I'll see you next time.